Hey, Michael Tracy here. We are in Helena, Montana, in the final days of the Montana special election campaign, which will reach its climax on Thursday. This is one of the Rob Quist field offices. It's the headquarters of the Montana Democratic Party, a pretty beautiful building. And we're talking to people and getting a sense of the tenor of the race. One of the issues that's come up pretty consistently is this idea of who is an authentic Montanan. If you look at the literature that's being put out by the campaign, uh, Rob Quist is identified as a Montanan with Montana values, Montana, 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 because uh, you know, according to some people that you talk to, there is a strain of what you might call nativism in the state. And now nativism has a very derogatory connotation in most uh, contexts, but that's the message that the Quist campaign has really gone with because his opponent, Greg Gianforte, they're calling him a New Jersey billionaire who just swooped into the state as an opportunist and wanted to basically plunder its resources and make a fortune and then uh, ride that into political power. I think there's some legitimacy to that line of critique, but at the same time, there are some facets of this kind of Montana exclusivism that maybe raise some questions. The AFL-CIO, for example, put out a statement endorsing Quist on April 27th, and they identified Quist as a, quote, homegrown Montanan. So I'm joined by Chris Fink here in Helena, Montana. We're having an interesting conversation about Rob Quist and the special election coming up on Thursday. When you talk to people that you know or who are in the area, I mean, do they tend to want somebody to represent them who is a native Montanan? Does it make a difference? Absolutely. You know, Montanas, we're picky about stuff. This state's important to us. And so we want somebody that sees issues on our level. All the candidates say they're going to do what I want them to do. And can I tell you the problem that I have? Yeah. The problem I have is when they say my opponent this in a negative way, no matter which one it is, I have a problem with that because it underestimates my intelligence. Plus, if I want to hear about your issues, I want to hear about a positive change for the future. I don't want to hear nothing about the past unless you're talking in reference to what's going to be a, a positive change for the future. Don't tell me about the other candidate. I'll look at the other candidate. Let me make that decision on my own. And you told me before that you're a Trump supporter. Yes. And yet you also see something appealing in Quist. Now, Quist is obviously a, a Democrat. Right. Is there any tension there or any contradiction there? Or how do you how do you explain that? You know, I have a friend who is on that side. And I say, what we need, it's not, it's, it's the United States of America for the people, of the people, by the people. So any weakness a Democrat can see in a Republican, if a Republican's in office, the Democrat should look at his weakness and show strength. And if it's a Democrat in the office and it's a Republican that's not, if they really care about Montana, they'll help that Democrat in his weaknesses. It's about, it's about working together to make both, both, all of our dreams come true, to make all of our beliefs and ambitions. It isn't about you being a Democrat and you winning, and me as a Republican, I, I try to belittle you or, or discredit you, because or, any negative is bad. It needs to all be positive. So if I can't help you in a positive matter to work for a positive change, I need to just let it go. You're in office. And what we need to do is help each other. We, this, this United States needs to come together, the Democrats and the Republicans. Rob is absolutely somebody, I've known Rob for a long time. He's somebody that would stand up for Montana and the United States. And it's critical because Montana is in the crosshairs of these multinational corporations um, who would like to come in and have their way with our resources. And um, so that's not a good thing. So definitely Rob Quist. So again, it's reasonable that Montanans would want somebody from Montana representing them in Congress. And it's not necessarily a negative nativism to favor that. But at the same time, when you translate that sentiment into political rhetoric, it can have some dodgy connotations that people should at least be aware of. And if Quist does win on Thursday, which is, seems like a perfectly plausible possibility, um, he'll have done so in part because he successfully utilized this authentic Montana rhetoric.